आना होगा ऑलमोस्ट इट्स ऑलरेडी सिक्स Today we have an interesting topic to be presented and discussed as integrated health information platform. I hope that it will be a great learning experience for all of us. I am feeling privileged to moderate this session. I am Dr. Shweta Mitra, and today we are very fortunate to have Dr. Jyoti Ma'am as an expert for this session. Madam has vast knowledge on public health, and she is public health specialist grade one. Currently, she is working at Airport Health Organisation, Delhi. She has worked at NCDC Delhi with CSO IDSP for last ten years. I am inviting today's presenters, Dr. Madhuvita Bhakto and Dr. Kalyani Mandal. Both of them are chairs from MKCG Medical College and Hospital, Berhampur, Odisha. Welcome, you, Dr. Jyoti Ma'am, and I am now requesting Dr. Madhuvita please to start your presentation and to share your screen. Thank you very much, Ma'am. A very good evening to everyone present here. Myself, Dr. Madhuvita Bhakta. and my esteemed colleague dr kalyani mandal second year pg mkcg medical college and bharatpur are here to present on integrated health information platform that is iitit i will be talking about the background and history of iitit its need objectives and key features integration of idsp and iitit diseases under idsp and iitit and the overview of the data collection process which will be further taken up by dr kalyani moving forward the specific learning objectives of this seminar are understand the need and functioning of ihip to have an idea about the data entry in ihip and to know the strengths and weaknesses of ihip in december of 2016 IDSP under the oversight of National Center for Disease Control Government of India conducted the disease reprioritization workshop and subsequently identified 33 priority health conditions for surveillance in addition the workshop was also called for an ICT master plan and minimum data set for health conditions under surveillance to strengthen an early outbreak detection and public health response In May of 2017 the IDSP conducted a workshop to develop the minimum data set for diseases and health conditions under IDSP at the request of Ministry of Government uh, Health and Family Welfare Government of India the WHO country office supported the development and design of the integrated health information platform the integrated health information platform is a recent development in the already existing IDSP program It was launched by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare to revolutionize the digitization of health sector in India. It was soft launched pan India basis from 1st April of 2021. IHIP is a near real time web based platform with advanced data modeling and analytical tools. Coming to the history of IDSP IHIP in 1997-1998 The National Surveillance Program for Communicable Disease was started. In the March of 2003, the Central Surveillance Unit was started. In November 2004, the Integrated Disease Surveillance Project was set up. In 2007 and 2008, the IDSP was made as a part of the National Rural Health Mission, and subsequently in 2008. the phased integration and implementation of ihip was done in the phasing of idsp and ihip the idsp was phased in a 
in three phases. The first phase was launched from 2004 to 2005. The second phase from 2005 to 2006. And the third phase was from 2006 to 2007. The IDSP IHIP was soft launched in seven states in Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Odisha, Uttar Pradesh, Telangana, and Kerala through video conferencing by the Secretary of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, on 26th of November 2018. It was launched nationwide by the Honorable Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare on 5th of April 2021. The migration of 11 states was completed by 30th September 2021 and the IDSP data entry portal was disabled. Additional 30 states, 13 states were migrated on 31st December 2021. The remaining 12 states were targeted for migration by the May of 2022. As of now, 11 of those states have already migrated, only Kerala remains. Now we come to what is IHIP. IHIP is an advanced surveillance system that is a web-based near real-time electronic information system. It is a platform that integrates data from various registries to provide real-time information on health surveillance from all across India for decision makers to take action. All the data contained in IHIP has public health surveillance attributes of time, place, and person. The data is geocoded for geographical reference. The design and development of this platform are attributed to the strengthening of the India's public health surveillance system. The following figure shows the web enabled software interface, which has a secured access of the data of non communicable diseases, other communicable diseases, and IDSP. This data is synchronized with the NHP data warehouse. This synchronization and health information exchange will give a real-time feedback for the integrated health surveillance platform. All these records are linked to facility NIL, geocoded pin, reporting unit ID, etc. Keeping in account the existing gaps in IDSP, the 2015 Joint Monitoring Mission Report of IDSP strongly recommended a review and redesign of the IDSP surveillance system. As a part of the IHR core capacity building, India needed a comprehensive health information system. IHIP provides the Union Health Ministry, State Health Ministry, local governments, and municipalities the real-time information on health surveillance from anywhere on electronic device. Hence, the objective of IHIP is to strengthen the disease surveillance to decentralize state-based surveillance for epidemic-prone diseases in the district, states, and national level. Coming to the key features of IHIP, they are the real-time data reporting accessible at all levels, advanced data modeling and analytical tools, GIS-enabled geographical representation of data into an integrated dashboard, role and hierarchy-based feedback mechanism, geotagging of reporting health facilities, and scope for integration with other health programs. The data will be provided in real time through the grassroots healthcare workers through their gadgets and tablets, through the doctors at PHC, CHC, or district hospital when the citizen seeks healthcare there, and through the diagnostic lab, which will provide data to the test carried out there. Coming to the geospatial epidemiology of health surveillance, the IHIP platform will provide the ability to describe and analyze geographical variations in diseases in the context of demographic, environmental, behavioral, socioeconomic, genetic, and infectious risk factors. It will help interpret geographical correlations of persons with their socioeconomic and demographic attributes as the data captures geocoordinates and sociodemographic characteristics. It will also help conduct the public health surveillance in the context of One Health. Coming to IHIP and One Health, IHIP can conduct public health surveillance in the context of One Health, which is an amalgamation of animal health, human health, and environmental health. They include data from airports, seaports, train stations, humidity, rainfall, precipitation, and other real time emergency alerts like tsunamis and earthquakes. 
This slide shows the diseases which were covered under IDSC. Now, additionally, some special surveillance modules were also added and functional under IHIP, which covers 33 plus disease syndrome and include diseases like COVID-19. Coming to the timeline for the development of IHIP, the phase one, that is the landscape analysis, spanned for three weeks from April to May of 2017. Stakeholders were identified to conduct structured data interviews for data discovery and background documents were reviewed during this phase. The phase two, that is requirement gathering and design, spanned for four weeks in September of 2017. During this phase, Data integration exercises were conducted to finalize the system requirement document and tender was finalized for bidding and commission of prototype development. The phase three, that is the validation, spanned for eight weeks around December of 2017. Field tests were done and the IDSP information platform was finalized. Also, field-based system deployment and staff training was done. Coming to the organizational structure and the functional structure of IDSP and IHI. Here, the blue arrow denotes the flow of information from lower units to higher units. The red arrow shows the flow of information from higher units to lower units. And the text in red color indicates the difference in the function of IDSP from IHIP. Although structurally the same as IDSP, there are some significant functional changes to achieve the original objectives envisaged in IDSP. In IHIP, the ANM feeds the syndromic case-wise disaggregated information through their tablets, namely the Unmol tablet, along with the geocoded location of the cases for geographic residents. Such data is synchronized directly into the server. Therefore, the district, state, and central surveillance unit will be able to view the analyzed data immediately. The DSU, SSU, and CUSU will be able to visualize the aggregated information as well as the disaggregated case space information as and when required. Upon identification of early warning signals, the district will mobilize the MOS or the rapid response team for early public health action. Notably, the district epidemiologist will provide the descriptive epidemiological analysis on time, place, and person to the district rapid response team to further reduce the action time. Dr. Madhumita, you are not audible. Probably there is some technological glitch from your side. Sorry, ma'am. Actually, the power went off here and so the network went off. Shall I continue? Sure, sure. Please continue. Thank you, ma'am. Madhumita, you can switch off your webcam till the power is used. Coming to the conventional IDSP data collection process. In the IDSP system, the lowest reporting unit, known as the subcenter, is manned by the auxiliary nurse midwife or ANM and the health worker. 
they identify the case based syndromic approach and hand delivers the aggregated data which is the symptom based cumulative number of cases through paper based consolidated s form weekly to the next upper level that is primary health center or the phc the medical officer of the phc enters the probable case data in the p form and sends it to the district this form is supplemented by the laboratory reporting of the biological samples through the l form upon analysis of data the district state necessary action through the district rapid response team whenever and wherever needed however this strategy takes considerable time from data reporting to the initiation of action moreover the inadequate and delayed reporting compromises the validity of data while the basic framework of data flow process remains quite similar the new ihrp real time data flow process includes complete digitalization of the paperwork that was done earlier this includes mobile reporting with geotagging data reporting and aggregation of reports data compilation and hotspot identification data analysis and daily reporting at national level district level state and central surveillance unit the various surveillance unit will be able to view and analyze the data immediately on the same day this takes minimum time for the data reporting to take the initiation of action now i would like to invite dr kalyani to take the presentation forward thank you dr madhumita so let's have a recap first till now we have learned about the background and history of ihip idsp the needs objectives and the key features of ihip the integration of idsp and ihip with the organizational structure the diseases and the data flow process now moving forward with the topic this figure shows the articulation of integration health surveillance platform pillar 1 is envision of idsp's integrated near real time e surveillance which means integration of the traditional disease surveillance methods of idsp with the advanced electronic surveillance technologies to monitor and track diseases in near real time pillar 2 is to embed innovation and ensure quality data for decision making which means integrating innovative practices or new ideas and to ensure that the data used for decision making is accurate reliable and of high quality pillar 3 is to empower public health surveillance workforce and pillar 4 is to ensure sustained financing and continued leadership coming to the requirements for data reporting the states are requested to ensure the availability of the following items to initiate reporting of data related to idsp using ihip the first one is the requirement of working computer systems and regular internet connectivity at each health facility or reporting unit adequate manpower trained for ihip at every level for monitoring including the identified data entry personnel at the health facility for data entry also there should be a proper mechanism to capture and record the requisite data for entering into ihip including the mandatory fields coming to the data reporting on ihip under idsp the process of data reporting on ihip under idsp consists of the following two key phases which needs to be followed subsequently in a continuous manner step 1 is the verification of master data of health facilities and step 2 is reporting of disease surveillance data under idsp coming to step 1 which is the verification of master data of health facilities during this one time activity the following steps are to be performed before initiating the reporting on ihip the first one is examination of user ids and passwords then creation of user profiles and creation of health facility directory this shows the creation of user profiles and health facility directory there are eight type of users including the rrt users and the admin users here we can see like in a sub center the user profile of the anm has to be created similarly in a primary health center which uses a p form or l form 
the user profile of the medical officer in charge has to be created. As the ANMs use the mobile version in the subcenter, the this facility information page is of the mobile version. So after login, the screen will show facility information, which has the basic details of the health facility. In this case, it is the subcenter. The name and contact number of the health worker, the name and contact number of the PHC medical officer in charge to which the subcenter belongs. Coming to step two, which is the reporting of disease surveillance data under IDSP. It has a mobile version as well as a desktop version. Mobile version is used in the subcenters by the ANMs and desktop version is used by the PFORM and LFORM users. The mobile version has S form for data entry, which includes suspected case forms and death forms. The mobile version also has an event alert form in the S form. The desktop version has P form for data entry and event alert. It has, it has submenus like the add patient record, add death record, and record aggregate data. The desktop version also has L form for data entry. The S form in the desktop version is not encouraged now. But even if it is done, it happens from the PHC. In all these cases, the daily data entry should be done and backdate data entry is not encouraged. In the subcenters, the ANM should keep entering the data even if there is no internet connectivity. And once the connectivity is available, she should press, uh, press the sync button on a regular basis after completion of the data entry. This is the mobile version of S form, which is suspected case form from the subcenters. After login, the ANM fills the details like the name, age, location, and whether there is any case with respect to the syndromes listed in the IDSP. It has eight pages for syndromes and each page having three syndromes. And once all the details seem to be correct, then the ANM clicks on the yes button to submit the data of the case. Now let's take an example of reporting of a death. For reporting of a death, the ANM has to click on the Yes button in front of the report death icon. The ANM has to report only those deaths which has not been recorded by the health system and deaths due to syndromes under the surveillance in IDSP within the last 30 days. It has the relevant details and the most relevant syndrome which the patient had before death. Now let's create an event using event alert form. And this is how an event alert form looks. It has the details like the health conditions or syndromes that can be reported under event alert form. It also has the source information who have reported the event, a message box with the details of the event, and a document can be attached which can tell something about the event alerted. This is the desktop version used by the PFORM and LFORM users. So this is a page which opens for a PFORM user. It has to be ensured that appropriate form has been provided to IHIP after successful login. Here, the user is a PHC, so it must have a P form and event alert form. And the same is being displayed here in the red box. It means the web portal is showing the right types of forms. This needs to be cross-checked for each user ID. In the red box at the upper right corner, we can see the login IDs. The login IDs for P form user begin with HF as seen in this case. And the login IDs for S form begins with SC and login IDs for L forms begin with LB. In the outbreak section, the submenus are event alerts, health condition alerts, and EWS outbreak summary. Now coming to the data entry of presumptive cases using P form. The P form page shows tabs of three different colors. That is, blue color to add patient record, red color to add death record, and green color to record the aggregate data. The basic details of the patient, the provisional diagnosis, the date of onset has to be entered. The laboratory details of the P form cases will be auto forwarded to the L form user linked with the health facility. Now we will see how a medical officer or ID, IDSP nodal officer of the health facility can flag an event through event alert form. This is how an event alert forms look like. Details are similar to that of a S form event alert form. Once the event is converted to an outbreak, it will appear under the EWS outbreak summary and the alert ID will be converted into the outbreak ID. 
on clicking a particular outbreak id under the ews outbreak summary the action update page will appear this is the action update page having basic details of the outbreak including preliminary information the details of the rrt members selected and the rrt update the rapid response team members can update their comments under the rrt update they can also uplo upload document or photo under the additional document section by clicking on choose files now coming to the l form data entry on clicking the laboratory case form menu the l form will appear the l form page will show add patient record and line listing options the fresh entry of l form is done by using add patient record menu all the fields in the add patient record of l form are same as that of add patient record of p form we have to enter the provisional diagnosis date of onset and whether the patient visited the opd or has been admitted to ipd in the line listing menu the results of the lab sample that were auto forwarded from the p form user account are updated the last three columns related to the results that is the date of test performed test result pathogen and remarks are needed to be updated coming to the reports and view map menu the report section can be used to generate various reports for analysis and monitoring various reports available under the reports menu are the disease summary reporting status summary s form reporting status suspected case form summary presumptive case form summary laboratory case form summary patient history report and lab performance report the view map menu helps to locate different health facilities on the map it also helps to get the disease or pathogen wise distribution of cases on the map it also shows the heat map to locate clustering of the cases now coming to the difference between idsp and ihip idsp captures the aggregated data only whereas ihip captures the data disaggregated by age gender and locality that is the case based surveillance at all levels that is central level village level and uh, state level idsp has a paper based data collection whereas ihip has electronic collect collection and transmission of surveillance data there is no linkage of data from s p and l forms in idsp but ihip links the data from s p l e w s 1 and 2 forms there is weekly surveillance reporting in idsp whereas ihip has real time or daily surveillance reporting IDSP monitors only 18 health conditions, whereas IHIP monitors more than 33 health conditions. The data is not geocoded in IDSP, but IHIP has the data geocoded for geographic reference. Also, IHIP provide analyzed reports on mobiles or other electronic devices. These are some of the refinements required in IHIP IDSP. although there is adequate reporting of data from the sub centers and primary health centers there is significant lack of reporting from the tertiary hospitals and medical colleges therefore electronic hospital system should be implemented which may be linked to ihip also there is significant lack of reporting from the private hospitals and laboratories uh, finally coming to the swot analysis of ihip uh, coming to the strengths it has closed network linkage there is secure and confidential storage of data or records hotspots can be identified as it is geocoded also there is good data analysis the weaknesses include that it does not support those unmol tablets provided by the government under rm and cha that have the android version of 5 or less also there may be network issues during the data entry there may be possibility of fake data entry by the health workers or there may be duplication of the data the opportunities of ihip include better surveillance coverage improved continuous monitoring creation of apa ids efficient training of manpower revamping public uh, public private partnerships and to enable evidence based policy making the threats of ihip include uh, the, the individual data portals for different programs like nikshe portal for tb or nikush portal for leprosy so all these portals can be linked to ihip for easy data access secondly it is a known fact that the doctor patient ratio or the health worker patient ratio in india is very low and 
it is already overworked given that real time reporting of forms as well as geo tagging every household in a district in the absence of adequate human resources will be a tedious process other thing uh, other thing in the threads may include the delay to get the approval from the state for the constitution of a new rapid response team so i would conclude by saying that while proper implementation of the project might take some time in light of the above problems still one can inarguably conclude that its pros will always outweigh the cons the way forward should be a strategic and phased introduction of ihip efficient training of manpower proper utilization of infrastructure and resources and to facilitate better continuity of care and diagnosis and prevention of epidemic prone diseases these are the references thank you Thank you, Dr. Madhubita and Dr. Kalyani, for your very nice and concise presentation. I'm quite sure that our audience have been enriched a lot from this and learned. Now I would like to request Dr. Jyoti Ma'am for her views overall on the presentation and the topic IJ. Yeah. Uh, thank you, both speakers. Uh, they actually uh, were able to uh, concise the essence of IHIP very well. so it seems that they have worked uh, very hard and gone through all the literature and guidelines and the training modules that are available so yes it was a very well presented and a very good topic as well that has been chosen so i hope that with this they will be able to at least implement ihip in their medical college start from there start from the very basic from where they are working so what is the status of ihip then only this seminar would actually be able to be get into the implementation phase so overall a very good presentation um i would also uh, like in the future if such uh, online platforms are demonstrated it will be really helpful for the audience to show the live demo so that they can actually log into the platform and show the live demo so that can also be done but overall it was a very good exercise very good presentation and i congratulate both the speakers as the coordinators as well thank, thank you ma'am thank you ma'am uh, madam there are few questions yeah uh, whether the new that is emerging and the re emerging diseases under surveillance in the ihip yes so as they said ki they have 33 um health conditions so these are not limited ihip has the capacity to include new conditions as well for example initially in ihip we didn't have nipa but when nipa came we were able to add to it then we added covid then we added monkey pox so as and when the new disease comes and it is it is not there in the 33 listed conditions the system has the capacity to add as well so any emerging and reemerging condition if it is not captured but we have captured most of it the infectious etiologies but if it is not there we are able to do it ma'am as has been already mentioned there is the geo coding of the data is there uh, any icd coding for the diseases in the ihip yes so ihip follows the uh, for the diseases there is an icd 10 coding that is being followed so that the purpose is ki whenever we have to it, it is a systematic way it is as per the government of india guidelines so whenever a platform is to be made they have to follow some certain guidelines so ihip has been made on the government of india guidelines which for the data portals so we do follow icd 10 guidelines and just not this it helps us in the api linkages like we have other guidelines like snomed and a few more so whenever the disease is coded into certain guidelines it helps into linkages these two systems so for example if i my dengue is at point number 5 as per the icd 10 for example and other certain system the dengue is also at point number 5 because they are following icd 10 so for me or for the um, it person it will be easier to link those data sets now if suppose some uh is not following icd 10 or any other guideline for them dengue may be something else dengue may be df like this 
or maybe dengue is at some other place as A. So matching five to A or dengue with DF will be very difficult. So yes, this portal follows the government of India guidelines, and we follow IC10 guidelines as well. Okay, ma'am, uh, our PGs are pension. That is uh, something in the way forward. But one of our uh, audience uh, professor, uh, she, uh, he has asked that is, uh, what is the next that is way forward for the IHIP? He likes to hear from you, ma'am. So IHIP, as of now, we have been able to implement in pan country. Like now we have closed the previous weekly IDSP portal. And now every state is doing the near real time daily reporting. But there are several, when we say it is doing, but it is not as perfect to, towards the 100%. As of now, we are somewhere between to 60 to 80%, but we have to reach close to the 100%. And when I say close to the 100%, that means all the facility is able to enter the data at least on a daily basis. Sometimes they miss it. Then we should be able to capture at least the major lab conditions which are under the IDSP mandate. Maybe as of now for the, from the medical colleges, from the private hospitals, we may not be requiring the presumptive data because presumptive data will not help us in capturing many of the outbreaks. But if we get a good lab confirmed data from the private hospitals, private labs, and medical colleges, this is what we are looking forward to. And especially the private reporting, the big private sectors, Apollo, Max, Lalpath Lab, Grand Vaxi, this is what we are looking forward to. So thank you, madam. It is very much enriching for all of us to hear from you. Yeah, thank you. Um, it was a very good exercise. And I also able to refresh my memories of the IHIP, the JMM, um, how we made IHIP. So that was also a good experience as well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now uh, we have reached almost to the end. I am expressing my gratitude from bottom of our heart. Uh, to all the office bearers, Dr. Haribangs Chopra sir, Dr. Purushottam Giri, Dr. A.M. Kadri, Dr. Uh, Spurila Garman, and all the office bearers of IPSM for providing us this wonderful learning platform. We are extremely thankful to Dr. Jyoti Ma'am for sparing her valuable time for us and giving inputs all through the grooming, preparation, and presentation for this session. Now I'm requesting all the members of the coordinating team Please do switch on their videos. The session has been possible with the hard works of Dr. Parak Chioda, sir, Dr. Prachetar, Dr. Pratik, Dr. Kaushik, Dr. Soni Rani, and Dr. Ritu. I am expressing my thanks to all my uh, audience for uh, patients hearing, learning, and also to uh, putting, for putting this great questions. I request all of you please to subscribe to the YouTube channel of IPSM eConnect to get updates and notifications of all the wonderful activities herein. I am requesting to be member of IPSM and come forward with your work presentation and share and learn from many more upcoming activities. So we are ending the session for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, teachers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.